What is going on guys? In this video, we are going to be talking about a brand new service from AWS called AppRunner. This was announced just two days ago and I wanted to make a video to tell you a little bit more about this service and why it's useful. And then of course, give you a hands-on demo in the console to show you what it is capable of. So let's just jump right into it. The first topic that I want to discuss with you today is just why AppRunner? What problem are we solving with this new service? Well, it basically boils down to one major point because infrastructure is hard. Everybody hates dealing with infrastructure, um, some more than others, and some that write infrastructure as code may actually love dealing with infrastructure. But me personally, it's the bane of my existence. Um, there's so many things that can go wrong with setting up your application, so many different components that you need to worry about when even you're a professional and you know exactly how the service works, it's very easily to kind of shoot yourself in the foot and get stuck with a trivial problem that blocks you for hours on end. You have to worry about all sorts of things, things like load balancing, things like target groups, auto scaling groups, security groups. How many groups are there? Domains, certificates, monitors, logging, all these things that we need to worry about. And that's time that could be better spent building our applications and delivering business value. So this is the problem that AppRunner is attempting to solve in one particular vertical of the cloud computing market. So let's learn about what AppRunner is more precisely. So what is AppRunner? Well, AppRunner is a fully managed container deployment service. And when I first saw it and first read about the details, it kind of seemed to me like it was a Fargate 2.0. If you don't know what Fargate is, Fargate's just a container management deployment service built by AWS. It's offered through um, the ECS or Elastic Container Service section of the AWS console. Uh, allows you to build container-based applications and deploy them in a serverless way. Now, where Fargate gets a little bit complicated is all the details or all the, the configuration options that you need to specify. Um, and with a service like AppRunner, a lot of that stuff is solved automatically for you because they handle all the details on your behalf. Uh, in terms of features, we have a couple key ones. Uh, so we have a notion of auto build and deploy. Uh, so you can hook into different source code repositories, either ECR or GitHub. And whenever you push a new image to your ECR repository or push a new change to your GitHub repository, it'll automatically build and deploy your application, which is you know, traditionally done through a code pipeline using code build and code deploy. Um, but all of that is still happening, but it's happening behind the scenes and just uh, AppRunner is doing it all for you. It supports load balancing, which is notoriously difficult to set up and get right. So it's nice that they handle all of the details there for you. Supports auto scaling so that you can easily scale up your application uh, to increasing traffic and scale it down when there is very little traffic. And finally, the thing that I hate the absolute most in this world, which is certificate setup and application uh, to your endpoint. So that is handled for you as well. In fact, when you create an AppRunner service, you are automatically given a HTTPS secured endpoint, and it's a very easy um, task to set it up with a new endpoint. It's done all through the console in a very intuitive way. So next in terms of other features that come with it. So everything you would expect in terms of metrics and monitoring and logging. Uh, so you get log and metric integration with AWS CloudWatch. Um, and it does come with a very useful kind of out of the box dashboard that gives you a good high level summary of what is going on with your service when you create it. So things like um, HTTP status codes, um, CPU utilization, amount of memory available, things like that. Those are automatically going to be available to you as a user of AppRunner. Some folks are saying that it is comparable to Heroku, but built on AWS. Uh, other folks are saying that um, it's kind of like what Elastic Beanstalk did for EC2. Um, that's what AppRunner is doing for Fargate. If you don't know, Elastic Beanstalk is just a kind of a wrapper on top of EC2 that you know adds load balancers, adds uh, easy code deployments, adds monitoring, a bunch of the stuff that AppRunner is also going to be doing for you. So from there, I want to move on to the next section, just talk about what the integration steps and configuration steps look like. Uh, like how do you actually get going and set all this up? So you have two options, really. The first one is that you can integrate it um, to automatically rebuild and redeploy on ECR image upload. Uh, the second option is with a GitHub source update. So whenever you push an update to your GitHub repository, provided you do all the steps to connect which is a fairly straightforward process. Um, it'll automatically rebuild your application and redeploy your application. That's if you have the automatic deployment and build setting activated. That is an optional feature. Um, so you do have the choice if you want that as well. And it is extra cost, minimal, but still extra cost. We'll talk about that later. 
Um, the next option is when you need to specify the uh, resources for your containers. So very kind of restricted. Uh, I don't know if this is just because of the initial launch or if there's going to be uh, more expansions of vCPUs and memory in the future. But in the beginning, you only have the option of vCPUs and you only can pick between one and two and uh, a memory option of 2GB and 4GB. So if your application needs more compute or more memory, then kind of out of luck, you may want to look to ECS um, or even an EC2 machine for your use case. All right, so in terms of the workflow, it's very, very simple. There are only three steps involved. First one is you create your service and connect it to your source. That's either ECR or Git. Second is you configure your service, all the options, all the port mappings, all the extra bells and whistles that you can decide if you want or not. And from there, you just launch and go. You literally just click a button, click on deploy. It takes care of deploying your application, starting it up, getting everything configured, and you're good to go. You hit the URL, bam, application is working. So that's what you got to look forward to. Um, let's quickly discuss the pricing before we move into the next sections. The pricing model is a little bit confusing, but I'm going to do my best to kind of simplify it for you here. Uh, so the first thing that you need to know about is that there's this notion of provision instances. Uh, so provision instances, you specify how many instances you want to provision. When they are not actively serving traffic, you need to pay kind of a base cost, which is 0 0.007 per gigabyte hour. So if you provision an instance that uses four gigabytes, it would cost obviously approximately double than something that you provision a two gigabyte instance for. Uh, so just keep that in mind. This is kind of a base cost that uh, is going to be there regardless of if your app is serving traffic or not. Um, once your app does start serving traffic, it switches over to a active instance mode and there is an additional cost there. Um, so you have to pay 0 0.064 uh, for every vCPU per hour. Keep in mind you are limited to just two vCPUs as of today, that is the maximum. And then you also need to pay for that provision instance cost that we just saw uh, from the step on the top there. But uh, basically the more compute and memory that you specify as part of your configuration and the more instances that you have, the more money you're gonna spend. It's a pretty easy formula to understand. Uh, some other details, there are some additional charges for some of the bells and whistles that come with AppRunner. The first one is that for enabling automatic deployments, you need to pay a dollar per month per application, which isn't very much, um, but you know, it kind of sucks that they charge you for this. Second is that you need to pay for build fees. That's 0 0.005 per build minute. I really hope you don't have a high cost for build fees because builds should not take very long at all, um, but they do charge you for this, so just keep that in mind as well. And lastly, this one has stung me quite a few times, which is um, you obviously need to pay for CloudWatch logs, so 50 cents per GB. Uh, so make sure if you are logging very verbosely that um, you set up some kind of archiving policy for your CloudWatch logs, or you just trim down how much you're logging. Uh, there are two more gotchas that I want you to know about before we do the demo. Uh, the first one is that uh, VPC connectivity is not yet supported, but however, it is a very high priority item on the AppRunner team's roadmap. So I would assume in the next maybe two to three months, we'll see an update on this. Um, but this could be a non-starter for some of you, but um, this is going to change relatively quickly, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. And the second one that kind of sucks is that you cannot scale down to zero, which means that you're always going to have to pay that base provision instance fee, even when your app is serving zero traffic. Um, I kind of understand why they do this, but um, you know it's something that you should know about. There's always going to be a base cost, even when you have uh, no usage on your application. So I think that's pretty much it for the overview of the service. I want to bring you into the console now to show you this thing in action and show you how it all works. So let's head over there now. All right, guys, so here we are in the console. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just go to the top bar and type in AWS App Runner. And there we go. We have this brand new service here. I'm going to click on that. Um, since we do not have an application that exists on this account, this is the kind of entry screen that we see here. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and click on this orange button here, create an app runner service uh, to get us started. Um, so for the source and deployment section here, this is the start of our configuration uh, step. So you have two options like I was telling you about before. You can set it up um, by a container registry through ECR uh, or ECR public if you have a public image. 
Uh, the other option is that you have source code that's stored on your GitHub or some other source code repository. You can select this option here. One thing is that like it's saying here, um, AppRunner deploys your source code by installing an app called AWS Connector for GitHub in your account. Um, so you need to install this in your GitHub account or in your organization. So there is a little bit of extra work that you need to do if you want to get this working with GitHub. Uh, and you need to specify some more settings in later steps in terms of the build commands and everything that um, should be done on startup. So I'm not going to be doing this through source code for now. What we're going to be doing is this through a container registry image that I have already uploaded on my account. Uh, so we are indeed going to be using ECR. And I'm going to click on browse here to bring up the image repository. So this is the image that I have on my ECR account. I just uploaded a Flask app. If you want to know how to do this, I have a video um, that walks you through the steps of deploying a application or a Docker based application to ECR. I'll leave that in the description section below. But I'm going to click on this now and just select the latest image and I'm going to go ahead and click on continue. Um, just before we go any further, I want to tell you what this app is and I'll just show you really, really quick because it's super simple. I'm just bringing this into screen really quick. Um, so we have an app.py. It's just got two routes. The first one is just your base route, which loads an index.html. And the second is a slash app path, which just returns a string, hello from app. Keep in mind, we are on port 8081. This is gonna be important for one of the later steps where we need to specify what port our Docker app is hosted on. In terms of the Docker file, some more simple stuff, um, just copying some requirements over, uh, changing our directory, installing those requirements, copying stuff over, exposing a port and setting our entry point and uh, primary file here. So that's all that's going on in this file. This is exactly what is uploaded as this image, as Flask app latest. I uh, just wanted to point that out for you here. Now in this next section, we need to specify our deployment settings. Um, you either have an option of manual or automatic. So I did run into a little bit of a problem when I was setting this up. I wanna kind of experiment and see if this happens again. Um, it happened in terms of the IAM role, but we're gonna kind of go through this together and see if that issue occurs. So I'm gonna put in automatic here. Uh, keep in mind that this does cost you an extra dollar per month for every application. Um, so, you know, if that's okay with you, then feel free. If not, then keep it on manual. So for ECR access role, we're gonna say create a new service role. I'm just gonna put one, two, three here. And uh, hopefully this part works. This is actually where it bombed out and I had to come back a little bit later how to try and fix it. So let's see. So we're gonna click on next and now we need to specify our service name. So let's just call this uh, foobar service. And then we need also need to specify our virtual CPU and memory. Uh, one is fine, two GB is fine. If you want environment variables, um, feel free to add them here, the keys and the values, but we're not gonna do that here, so no worries. Um, now this is slightly important. This is where we specify the port that we expose on our Docker container. So put in the port that you specified, mine was 8081, and you should be good to go. I don't think we need to do anything here. No, we don't need start command because that's already defined in our Docker container. If you do want auto scaling, which is a good idea to have for apps that expect high volumes of traffic, then you can set it up here. Um, I'm gonna click on custom configuration here just to kind of see what this does. Um, okay, so we can create a new template if we want, but I'm just gonna leave this as default. So out of the box, it comes with um, up to 80 requests of concurrency. Uh, one minimum size and two maximum size. I believe you can increase this uh, up to 100, if not higher, but um, you would have to click on add new here. Let's actually try it. Yeah, so you can play with these settings if you want. Let's see how high the max can go. Will that work? I don't want to click save or else I'm going to have a huge bill, but <laughs> um, whoa, no, please. There we go. Default configuration is good for me. Um, here's where you specify your health checks if you are using load balancing, so health checks. Um, just to walk through what are the uh, settings mean here. So this first one here for timeout, it says the amount of time the load balancer waits for a health check response, five seconds is good. Um, so, you know, if you're not receiving a response in five seconds, it indicates something is definitely wrong. Uh, the interval is the amount of time between health checks for an individual instance, so wait 10 seconds. Um, the unhealthy threshold is the number of consecutive health check failures that determine an instance is unhealthy. So if I'm doing the math right, this means that if you have 50 seconds that have passed, that means you would have had five attempts to perform a health check. And if you fail all those five attempts over those 50 seconds, then it's game over and um, the health check fails. 
From there, uh, we also have health thresholds, which is the number of consecutive successful health checks that determine an instance is healthy. One is fine, but if you want to be a little bit extra careful, you may want to change this to three to make sure that instance is indeed up and running. Uh, I'm going to leave that as one. Security, not really going to talk about this here. If you're using KMS, this may be relevant, but for most, it's probably not. Tags, not going to talk about that at all. That is just a kind of administration and organization feature. So this is looking good. Let's go ahead and click on next to proceed to the next section. Just getting a quick summary here. So let's hope this doesn't bomb out and go to the bottom and click on create and deploy. Okay, so it did bomb out on me. That's fantastic. So I just remember in the first step here, we created this role. I typed in one, two, three. For whatever reason, I'm not sure what's happening. Maybe this is just uh, kind of growing pains with this new app uh, or with this new service. It, it does this like I don't have this role. I know that for a fact. I can put any random number in here. You try that again and now it's telling you that it already exists. So for whatever reason, this happened to me earlier as well. You need to go back, go to, I believe, wait, where's the uh, section for this? No, it's not here. It was, I believe, under the source and deployment. Yeah, here it is. So what you need to do is, unfortunately, you can't use this. It doesn't seem to work correctly, create new service role. So you need to go to use existing service role. And now it tells you that this thing exists. And here you see, like, I had these other ones that I was flailing with trying to figure this out earlier. So if you click this now and then go next, scroll down, next, and then again, back to where we got into this debacle, click, click on create and deploy. This works perfectly. So anyone from AWS watching, please fix that. It's kind of annoying. Um, so what we are seeing now is kind of the default screen of App Runner. Once you have clicked into your service and just clicking on refresh here to make sure everything's up to speed, we see that under the activity panel here that we are currently creating the service and it is currently in progress. We're going to wait for this to finish up. Uh, if we go to the log section, we can see what it is doing. And this is kind of the App Runner specific event log. These aren't logs that my service is outputting. This is just what App Runner is doing. And um, in terms of application logs, these are actually what my application is doing. So let's see if there's anything in there um, currently still being created. I wonder if this is going to work. Uh, we may have to just wait a minute or so until the service is done. But uh, in the meantime, let me just walk you through what else is here. Uh, under configuration, this is where you would come if you want to change any of your um, kind of memory settings, vCPU settings, your port settings, any auto scaling details that you want to modify. That all happens here. Uh, so really not much to see in terms of metrics. So this is a little bit important to see. Hopefully, yeah, so everything is showing up. So this is kind of the high level dashboard that they give you out of the box. Shows you things like request count, HTTP 200s, 400s. Uh, 500s and latencies, a bunch of other stuff here. There's probably more metrics available on CloudWatch if you go there to take a look at this service, but those are pretty important ones. And the last thing I want to show you is just this custom domain section here. So this custom domains is what I was talking about earlier, makes it very, very easy to add your own domain that you have registered on Route 53. So this is the default domain that's given to you. What you can see here, it's HTTPS, which is fantastic. Uh, and you can add your own domain. So if you've bought one and you want to link this app to that domain, you just go in here. I uh, haven't tried this personally, but I believe what it will do is go ahead and create the DNS entries that it needs in order to make all this stuff work. So uh, pretty cool stuff. Um, and just kind of refreshing this, seeing if anything changed. Um, seems like it's still creating the service and this is spinning up here. So we got to wait a minute or so. Uh, I'm just going to fast forward this now and wait for this to finish and then show you the next step. All right, guys, so it was five minutes or so. We can finally see by looking at this top banner here that everything was uh, successfully created. We also see here that uh, our service overview, we are under running. Uh, so now you can see here, if we click on this domain here, we can see our application is ready to go. And this is uh, the primary path that I set up, just our root path. And if I just do slash app now, this should show something else. And there you go. So this just shows you uh, getting started with uh, app runner make sure you go and delete this after so that you don't get charged anything extra but if you enjoyed this video check out the ones on the right for more on ecs and as always please don't forget to like and subscribe thanks so much and i'll see you next time